Hello everyone, this is James and not Pete. So a lot of you are already figuring out that something is up. Uh, so here's the deal. So last week, if you are a long time listener to the show, and if you aren't a long time listener to the show, you know, welcome. Hopefully uh, you stick around and subscribe. So anyway, if you listen to this week's show, you would have heard us refer a few times to the mystery guest and whether or not they were going to get back to us. Now, uh, we can reveal now that that mystery guest was Joffa, basically the most famous fan in the AFL. Uh, you would have heard us talk about on the show the last few weeks uh, the idea that the AFL is cracking down on fan behaviour at games. And Pete and I thought, wouldn't it be great to talk to the AFL's um, most famous fan in Joffa, get a feel of what he's uh, making of it, whether or not this is a bit, a bit of a wider issue between elites and regular people, and what he makes of it all. So we tried to get him on the phone. Things didn't work out, so we went ahead with the Matt Kibbe interview, which was awesome, and thanks again to Matt Kibbe for coming on the show. But anyway, so just as I'm about to send out the podcast, so we got in your phones, we, uh, we get Joffa on the line, we're able to interview him, and it went really well. And so we thought... Everyone cares about AFL fan behaviour right now. This is the big talking point in Australian media. It's like getting into you know New South Wales and Queensland media as well. Uh, so why don't we just release the interview now? Because it might not be a big issue next week, and we do want to make sure that people hear from Joffa while everyone's thinking about it. And then we got in touch with the Herald Sun. So if you are coming to this podcast from the Herald Sun's mention of Joffa's article, that's awesome. And if this is your first ever podcast, stick around. Maybe make sure you hit the subscribe button. You can get all of our episodes. And uh, yeah, we've got a whole bunch of interviews, a whole bunch of other episodes you can listen to as well. So for long time listeners, enjoy Joffa. Regular scheduling program comes back next week, but enjoy this uh, extra bonus treat. If you are new to the show, make sure you're subscribing. Make sure you're hitting uh, five star reviews if you like the show. And uh, yeah, all right. So we'll go to that interview now. All right. So we're here with Australian rules football's most famous fan, leader of the Collingwood cheer squad, known around the country for wearing his gold sequin jacket when the Pies are going to win. Joffa Korf, welcome to the Young IPA podcast. Thanks, guys. Good of you to have me. No problem. So you wrote on your Facebook on June 12, I won't attend another AFL game until Gil comes out and apologises to all supporters at the way we are be, being treated. Now, what made you so angry that you would stop yourself from doing the thing you love, going and watching the Mighty Pies? Well, they've been trying to sanitise the terraces for some time now, and this year it seems to be a little bit worse, and it's come to the point of just being unbearable. I think security have gone way overboard. You hear rumours that there are people filming other people. Um, it just didn't seem, didn't feel like football anymore. So um, so someone had to stand up and sort of say, hey, uh, this is enough. You know, we've had enough, leave us alone. Now, basically, what we're saying is, leave us alone. We, we tend to self-regulate. We're not about violence at the football. In fact, people, uh, you know, who involve themselves in any type of violence at the football should be banished for life. We don't want them. We just want the terraces to be loud, passionate, stand up when you want to, have a go at the umpire if you want to, God forbid, even boo. I mean, that's all a part of what we do. Um, not just me. I'm, I'm talking on behalf of all my brethren right across Australia. That's what the supporter does. Leave us alone. Uh, let's talk about the brethren. So, uh, how much support have you been getting from other AFL fans around the country about uh, this this boycott? Well, now let me explain something about boycotts. Now, I've um, boycotts don't usually work unless you get thousands upon thousands of people. So, you've got to be very, very careful personally to do a boycott. That's fine, uh, but to try and get a boycott to to, to come with you doesn't work because um, you, know, you, you might um, you might start up something on social media and you might get hundreds and hundreds and you sort of think, yeah, this is going to be good, it's going to work. But in reality, at any football game, you're not going to miss 200 people. You and see? So unless the stadiums are half empty or a quarter, uh, a quarter empty, then you notice it. So um, me not going to the games unless we get an apology was a way of saying... Hey, I'm fed up, and I know everyone else is fed up. And as far as support, I don't think I can ever remember uh, 18 tribes, as it is now, because we've got 18 clubs. I can't remember 18 tribes coming together, side by side, uh, all with the same uh, voice, uh, all with the, 
the, the same um, the thing that I'm saying is leave us alone. We've been very strong in our message. We've been very clear. It's unified. It's 18 club supporters coming together. We may never, ever see this type of thing again, but we're seeing it now because everybody is, is of the same opinion. Leave us alone. Have you had any contact from Gil McLaughlin, who's the AFL in charge of the AFL, or even Eddie Maguire, the Collingwood president? No, I haven't heard from um, uh, I haven't heard from 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 Gil. Um, I regularly have chats with Eddie, text messages, and so forth. Um, but Gil might apologise to me. I'm just the I'm just an underling. I'm an underling in the terrace. Gil McLaughlin is the big CEO. Why would he? Why would he? take time out to talk to me. That's never going to happen. And I understand that. Um, uh, as far as the, the apology goes, I, I accept his apology, so I will be back to the game on the weekend. I accept his acknowledgements that there are a lot of things wrong in the terraces at the moment. I, I accept that and, and thank him for that, for acknowledging that. Um, so let's see what happens in uh, you know in this round and, um, and the full round the week after. So no, I think we'll see a difference. I, I'm pretty sure on that. So you say you accept his apology that he issued at the press conference. Is there anything you would have liked to hear him say other than sorry? Is there any more stronger statement you would have wished he'd made while he was up there? Well, he didn't mention the word sorry at the press conference, I don't think. Is that right? I don't think so, yeah. But he mentioned the word sorry to the Herald Sun yesterday. So... I'm running with that. I'm running with his apology yesterday to the uh, uh, the chief uh, football writer of the Herald Sun. I, th- I forget his name, the bald-headed guy. Yeah, Mark Robinson. <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah, not yeah, him. Uh, well, what's his name? Robertson. Yeah, Robo. Ro- Robertson or Robinson? Robinson. Robinson. I, I, he, he, Robinson, okay. He mentioned an apology to him. Uh, so that's good enough for me. We, we acknowledge that. We run with that. Today, he acknowledged that the... Uh, the security have been over a little bit heavy-handed, and we acknowledge that and we run with that. So we'll see what happens uh, now and next week and and the, and the rest of the season that will follow. That's what we'll do. Joff, you had a piece in The Age recently, and one bit really uh, sort of stuck with me. You wrote, um, um, when you go to the footy, you are among people who won't point the finger and tell you what you should be thinking, what you should be saying, and when you should be saying it. In, today, oh, yeah. in today's world, there are not many places like that. I was particularly oh, fascinated God. by that last bit where you said there's not many places like that. Do you feel like we're overregulated uh, at the moment just in society we, generally? We, 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 in politics, I lean towards the left. Sadly, there are a minority of people who are, who are extreme the left-wing lunatics. That's what they are. They infiltrate the media and the radio stations and they, and, they, and they push out this message that this is how you've got to think, this is what you've got to say, you can't behave like that. And this minority, this minority, the extreme left-wing lunatics, they have a very powerful voice and a very loud voice. And the PC society that we're living in today is going to kill us. It is slowly doing it now. So... Um, and it's also people pretending to be offended. There are a lot of people out there that just pretend to be offended so they can talk about something. Yeah, um, I'm, so I'm probably getting off track here a bit. No, no this, is, I, this is great I, stuff, Joffrey. I, 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 I think in the terraces, we're all one people. We're all there for the one reason, to support the club that we love. There's no PC. There's no pointing the finger. There's no looking, at, looking down on someone because they may not have reached the heights that you've reached in life. We are being bashed by commentators who sit behind glass windows at football games. You're not allowed to boo. You can't say bald-headed flog. I tell these people, get into the terraces and get a feel of what's really going on at football games and what football people do. Uh, don't sit up in your, in your swirly chairs behind glass windows and profess that you know everything about football because you've got a big job in football. That really annoys me, and this is what's happening. Yeah, that's such. uh, I completely agree with you. Uh, This divide between like the uh, upper elites and the people that actually watch footy, and I want to like, is that also something that's going to so many other ways of Australian rules football? Like, I'm I'm immediately thinking of uh, the AFL spending all this money on AFLX when country footy is dying. Oh, don't get me started for God's sake! uh, AFLX should be called Mickey Mouse. It is. It is terrible. Uh, And and again. 
again, the AFL won't listen to the masses. The masses don't want AFLX. Forget the crowds you're seeing at AFLX games because they're just freebie tickets. They're kids that uh, uh, that love it, and that's okay, you know, fair enough. But the masses don't want AFLX. Wait till a superstar does a knee and is out for the season because of an AFLX match. It's not going anywhere. It's not going to do anything. It's not going to go overseas. I, I don't know why they're doing it. People don't want it. Why don't they say, okay, it was an idea. We wanted to push it. Uh, you don't like it. You're not enjoying it. It's costing money. We're going to give it the flick. Why don't they say that? No. They'll come back this year and they'll say, oh, well, we're going to do this and uh, we're going to make it look like that. We'll give it one more try and people still won't like it. AFLX is nothing. It's rubbish. So another thing you wrote about in The Age recently, you said that uh, you feel like that people like you and ordinary footy fans are trying to be replaced by the AFL by what you refer to as theatre goers. Do you think there's an element of elites trying, looking down their nose at ordinary working class supporters and, and getting... Oh, absolutely. Them to... Of course there is. Have a, look at, have a look at Marvel Stadium. I mean, that's, uh, that's a movie theatre. Let's be honest here. It's a theatre. It's a movie place. Uh, 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 they've got chairs up on level one that you sink into and watch replays of the game that you're at. Well, come on, give me a break. Um, hate the place. Marvel State, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a horrible place. It represents everything bad about football today. Um, you know, I do think there's... Um, I, I, I do think uh, the, the ordinary football goer uh, the working man, and I don't like using that expression too much, but you know what I'm trying to say. He wants to go to the football on on weekends because it's his time out from the craziness of the world we live in today. It's his time out to just to, for bloody three hours to go and enjoy himself, support his club, not get involved in racism, homophobe or, or violence, but just to go and enjoy himself. And we're, we're now being lectured to and we're having the, 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 their finger pointing at us saying, well, now we're going to watch you, how you enjoy yourselves. And, and we're going to tell you how you should enjoy yourselves. We're going to tell you that you shouldn't call the umpire a bald head of flog. And we're certainly going to tell you that booing is offensive. Well, you know, hang on a minute. Yeah, piss off. Yeah, leave us alone. Again, I get back to this, this very important message of, leaving us alone, because that's what they've got to start doing. Let us be. And I think I mentioned that in the article as well in The Age. Just let us be. We're not silly people. We're not idiots. We self-regulate. Leave us alone. No worries, Joffa. Well, we've, we've got time for one more question before we'll let you go. Um, yes. I just wanted to ask you, what is your greatest moment ever at the footy? Oh, gee, that's a pretty unfair sort of question. <laughs> because when you follow a great club like Collingwood, <laughs> there are zillions of great moments. Um, I think the greatest moment would be um, uh, sitting uh, at a grand final in the last quarter, in the last quarter, knowing that you're not going to lose and you're waiting 30 long minutes to see your team lift up the Premiership Cup. And, of course, I'm referring to 2010. Um, it was just magnificent uh, to, to sit there and uh, for a club that you loved and you're waiting, like I said, 25, 30 minutes, uh, and you know it's going to happen, you can't get beat. It is just one of the most amazing things that a football fan can experience. So uh, I would have to say 2010 for that reason alone. All right, Jaffer, I've actually got one more question for you. So, uh, yes, you said before <laughs> this was the last one. Yeah, well, we uh, pulled a Swifty on you. So anyway, last question, <laughs> I promise this time. Uh, so this... The whole issue really comes down to umpires not being wanted. Uh, umpires don't want to be booed at work, and they say, "Well, we can't come don't, to your workplace." Don't place. give me this is my workplace. Okay, that, don't don't even mention that. How precious is an umpire to point somebody out in the crowd? That man called me a bald headed flog, for God's sake. That, 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 ask another question. This is going to end sour. Oh, no, I was just going to say if umpires do, if the umpires are rejecting getting booed at their workplace, would you be okay yeah. with umpires coming to other people's workplaces and booing them so they get to get. Oh, it would be. I would love umpires to come to my work. I would sit back and laugh my head off. It would be the funniest thing. But you know what? In my workplace, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting paid 10 grand a day. 
Well, Joffre, I think on that note, that's a very good answer. We'll let you go. Thank you so much for coming on the Young IPA podcast, Joffre. Guys, that's been a great pleasure. And um, and let me know when it's up and running and we'll uh, process it through the social media system. I might even send a copy to Gil. Oh, that'd be great. We'd love, we'd love that. I'm sure he's a listener anyway, but we'll see. Well, I don't know if he'd like it too much. <laughs> Guys, thank you.